This segment of Del Marva Life is brought to you by Rommel's Ace Hardware. It seems to always happen. As bad weather is approaching, it's usually a mad dash to get everything you need. Yeah, but if you get everything ahead of time, you can avoid all that. Brian Spiros stopped by Rommel's Ace Home Center to find out some of the key items that would come in handy during a storm. As the saying goes, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst, especially since Mother Nature can be unpredictable at times. There's three different stages of preparation for a storm. You have your before the storm, your actual action plan during the storm, and then your recovery plan for once the storm has passed. Sean Bounds is the inventory director for Rommel's Ace Hardware. He says when it comes to bad weather, you need to plan ahead. The biggest thing we run into is everybody tries to get everything done at the same time, the day before the storm, and that's when you run into your big crowds, you're out of product. Great practice would be to certainly, I mean, you're coming into this time of the year, it seems to happen every time, you know, coming into September, to start preparing for these things a little ahead of time and be ahead of the crowd. There are some simple items you can buy inside Rommel's Ace that will prove to be a big help. First, Sean says nylon cables can be used to keep things from blowing away. For example, say you have a lot of patio furniture outside and you can't bring it all inside. Maybe you take your nylon cable and just cable it all to your deck or cable it all to a secure structure in your yard so that it's, it's not going to just fly away on you. And don't underestimate the power of plywood and a tarp. The good thing with a uh, plywood is especially like for your windows stuff like that when stuff gets flying uh, even though just the power of the wind could actually blow your window right out um, so you plywood up your windows plywood up any glass doors storefronts um, a lot of commercial property have a ton of different big glass storefronts great idea to plywood them up and as far as for your standard homeowner um, tarps uh, used for like in basements they use them a lot it helps keep the water out you can help seal the inside of any of your doors or area where you could typically uh, um, run into flooding. All right, Sean, so there are some simple tools you say everyone should have before and during the storm. What are they? Yeah, some of your most basics can be a hammer and nails. Uh, make sure you have a solid hammer ready to do the job. Don't have the handle pulling apart or something like that. You get an emergency, you want to be able to use it. Uh, another great thing to have on hand would be a handsaw. You want to make sure you have sharpened uh, teeth on it so that if you got to make some cuts, you need to cut your plywood down to size, something like that. You have it available. Last but not least, a drill driver. Uh, in case you need to uh, drill down some plywood, anything like that, you want to make sure you have an actual drill driver with a charged battery. That way you're not trying to hand screw everything that you're going to have to do. Another helpful item, sandbags. Believe it or not, they have multiple uses. A great thing to use them for, you can set them up by your door, set them up behind anything. It also helps so that if there was a major rush of water, it actually helps support the door as well. Um, but you can lay them down right at the um, foot of your door and it helps keep the water from coming into your house. You can also use them for if by chance you had to evacuate, helps keep weight in the vehicle, helps you keep, helps keeps you from um, hydroplaning in your vehicles like that. We can also order uh, the bags that actually you can pack water into and use for the same thing. Instead of having to carry around the sand and it can get a little bit messy, you can also fill them full of water. And if the power goes out, you should be ready. Every flashlight, every radio, anything like that, everything's going to be taking batteries. There's also a lot of things in your house that actually operate on batteries that you don't even realize until the electric's out and now it goes to its battery backup and you, you don't have the batteries for it. Um, so it's a good idea to have all different size batteries and just being prepared for a for again when the power does go out. Another big one is a battery operated or crank up operated radio. Uh, if the power does go out for extended periods of time, you have no way to keep informed with what's going on. Um, it should be able to connect to the NOAA um, emergency uh, channel. And when it comes to food, make sure you have a cooler filled with ice to keep frozen items cold. And if you need to heat up food and there's no electricity, that's where a sterno comes in handy. The good thing about a sterno is you can actually use it to, you can heat up food. So you, some of your different um, foods and your canned goods that you have on hand, you can actually use a sterno even though you don't have power to go ahead and heat some of that up, heat some soups up, stuff like that. And uh, we have them right here in the store. And by the way, those uh, sandbags that mm -hmm. he mentioned that you can fill with water, uh, Sean says they are also beneficial because that way if you need water in an emergency situation, you got bags full of it. Mm -hmm. Now, some other things that you need in your storm preparedness kit. Drinking water in non-breakable containers. Non-perishable foods and utensils, like a manual can opener. First aid kit, don't forget all the necessary prescription medications. You need to have a cell phone with a charger. I'm going to show you one here in a little while. Blankets, sleeping bags, and extra clothes.
Now, sometimes you work hard to prepare your home before Mother Nature takes a swing, but sometimes her punch is just too much. It's hard to believe we are just a little over a month away from the one year anniversary of Hurricane Sandy. Several communities flooded and one area that is still recovering here on Delmarva is the town of Crisfield. According to the Somerset County Long Term Recovery Committee, as of March 2013, there were still 218 damage cases still open. Right now, there are still more than 100 cases that still need to be assessed. To date, two new homes are almost complete. Five more are expected to break ground later this month. And in all, there will be 25 to 30 new houses in the town. Now, the Recovery Committee says people are still in need right now and will need the following things throughout the fall and the winter. Funding for building supplies and appliances, skilled volunteer construction workers, including electricians, carpenters and HVAC installers, volunteer groups to work on construction and for more information, you can go to delmarvalife.com. And while it's been a quiet year thus far for hurricanes around Delmarva, that could change. While in recorded history, there have been three hurricanes that the eye passed directly over or adjacent to Delmarva. The last one was in 1878. So joining us this afternoon to talk about the part the American Red Cross takes in hurricane preparedness is John Culp, who's the executive director of the Lower Shore Chapter. John, thank you so much. Thank you for, for having me. For joining us this afternoon. Uh, you guys, uh, I'm going to go back in time just a little bit. You spent a lot of time in Crisfield in Somerset County when the storm came through there. What, what kind of stuff went on there? Well, we did there, of course, uh, what we tried to do <laughs> all over the uh, peninsula. Of course, the need was uh, greater there in a lot of ways. But um, a local chapter like the Lower Shore chapter is the first responder. We're, I'm sorry, while you're talking, we're, we're taking a look at, at what was actually flooded during that time. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so we opened a shelter in, in uh, Somerset County that was in Washington High School, which is where it, it usually is. Right. And, uh, you know, we put supplies in there. We put volunteers in there to the best of our ability. Um, we had uh, uh, bilingual volunteers go there as well, yeah, which yeah. Uh, the county uh, was very grateful for because it's a, it's a bilingual population that comes in there. And that shelter was open four, four days. Most right. of the shelters, uh, because of where Sandy went, most of the shelters were only open a couple days, but the one for Crisfield was open four days. Now, you guys were, were the first ones with boots on the ground. What are you doing now? What's going on now? Well, uh, as I mentioned, the, the uh, local chapters is the first responder, okay? Right. Uh, when they get into the rec recovery phase, which the rebuilding phase, uh, which is what's going on now, Chris Field, that moves to a, a higher pay grade than me. <laughs> that, that, moves, that moves to the national. So National uh, we, Red Cross has Yeah, the National Red Cross is handling uh, uh, the continuing effort down there. I don't have the resources or the expertise or the staff. Right. Um, to do anything like that, so that and moves if, to Washington. And if we can help bump you up with that, we're going to talk about that here in, in just a second. Okay. As well. So, and yeah. we keep talking about how it is a quiet season. So you guys are preparing, right? Yes. Keeping uh, your fingers crossed. Yeah, we keep our fingers crossed. Of course, we uh, make sure that our supplies uh, are adequate. We have trailers uh, positioned around our service territory, and we make sure that they're they're uh, fully equipped. Uh, we train our volunteers. We divide our volunteers into teams, shelter teams. Uh, and there's yeah. a lot of partnering that goes there's on. There's a lot of partnering. This is what people, we, you know, we play our role, but the response to something like Sandy is very, very much a community effort. And the leadership is done by the emergency management people in the various uh, counties. We, we respond to them. They name the shelters. Right. They know what we can do. Um, and uh, they, they put it all together. And we have, you know, we don't, the the planning goes on all year long. I mean, we have regular meetings so that everybody understands they know what I can do and I know what to expect from them. When it comes to the people, what are you looking for? When, when you're wanting volunteers to get out and, and do some help, what kind of people are you looking for? Well, uh, we have a lot of needs. We have, uh, if somebody wants to volunteer for the chapter, we can use them, you know, some come in uh, to do administrative work you know, to help me with mailings and with fundraising. Right. Some people are uh, help with uh, specific fundraising efforts. Uh, some people are what we call uh, joint disaster action teams. And these are the people that get up at three o'clock in the morning and go to a house fire, you know. Um, some people just want to help with sheltering. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, a, some people want to drive uh, vehicles. Uh, so there's a million, million ways to help. What about donating goods? 
Uh, the Red Cross has moved away from taking physical goods. Mm -hmm. uh, we have found that um, many times what is given, the physical goods that are given, doesn't match the need and that getting stuff there is uh, expensive and difficult. Uh, some of the waste uh, in Katrina was horrible, warehouses yeah. full of stuff that wasn't used. So the Red Cross doesn't collect anymore. We just ask for the cash, and then we go get what's needed, and we get it from the least expensive source. Ah, okay, well that makes sense. Makes so sense. Disasters like this happen quickly. So you really need to prepare in advance. Uh, they, they do, but um, the Red Cross tracks uh, storms that form off the coast of Africa. They, I mean, we, we know many, many days ahead that coming. something's coming, trouble's coming our way. Yeah. It's, it, uh, and, and about five days out, you know, they have the cone. Right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're really in tune with all that. When, it, when we bring, I'm sorry, when we bring it home, we need to prepare too, don't we? What's yes, we, absolutely we do. And this is, this is the time of year when we stress that. We have three mantras that we like to ask people to, uh, to think about. You should have supplies on hand. We call, make, call it make a kit. Okay. And uh, a lot of it's common sense, but you should have, you know, a flashlight and batteries and canned food and a manual can opener. We oh, had, yeah, we yeah. had oh, one yeah. person put an electric can opener down that. in the basement and, you know, the, all the power's out. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so um, a lot of it's common sense, but um, I have, if somebody wants a checklist, uh, right. they can call the chapter and I, I have a checklist. So anyway, have supplies on hand. Sit down at, over dinner and make a plan with your family in the event of a hurricane or right. in the event of a tornado. And we had a tornado come through not long ago. Yes, mm -hmm. we did. This is where we go, kids, and this is what we're going to do. Just talk about it, you know. Or the event, in the event of a fire, this is how each Have of us gets out board. of the house. Just talk about it. Right, what's your third key? What's your third? third and, key? and then the uh, third one is uh, keep informed. Uh, one thing I have come to understand is that the emergency management people in all the counties, all the lower shore counties, are very, very competent people. And they are not people, uh, you know, that uh, react uh, inappropriately in a panic. In right. a panic yeah. Because something's coming. These are very thoughtful people. They know what it means for people to evacuate and that sort of Stay thing. Stay informed. Trust them. John right. Kelp, Executive listen Director of the Lower Shore Chapter of the American Red Cross. Thank you, excellent information. By the way, if you'd like to get some more information like John mentioned there, uh, it's very easy to do. All you have to do is go to our website, delmarvalife.com, click on the show tab, and we'll hook you up. Well, still ahead on Delmarva Life, we learn what it takes to keep our power up and running and what you should do if your power goes out. Plus, how long our food in the freezer and refrigerator will actually last. A little bit later on, there's nothing worse than that helpless feeling of sitting in the dark when the power goes out. Now, maybe you've thought about getting a generator but you're not sure exactly what to do, where to go, and things like that. Well, we're going to talk the benefits of having one and what you need to know before you have one installed. Delmarva Life is going to be back in just a second, but first, you still have time to get today's Delmarva Life Daily Deal. Today's deal, $10 for $20 worth of food and drinks at Andy's Place in Salisbury. You can get the daily deal on delmarvalife.com or download the free Delmarva Life Daily Deal app for your iPhone, iPad, or Android. It's so easy to get our great deals right in the palm of your hand.